If you have the chance when you're driving the I-90 through eastern Washington State, definitely stop off at Ginkgo State Park. This unique location has dozens and dozens of huge logs of petrified ginkgo biloba trees. Imagine that, this beautiful fan tail style plant that requires a lot of water, as you can see, in a highly desert region, actually was once completely coated in water and, and just loaded with trees out here where now when I look out here, you can see there isn't tree one. I mean, these plants have been put in here since this interpretive center was put in. So it's definitely an interesting location. Now, of course, it's against the rules to take any collections and everything in that, but about a half mile before the visitor center is a rock shop where you can pick up legal souvenirs to take with you. Now, the odd thing about petrified forests is you think, oh, there's going to be stands and stands of petrified trees. It really doesn't work like that because most of this was all from volcanic destruction where you had some sort of volcanic blast that happened over, buried those trees before they could burn or get destroyed or deteriorate. And that way, the petrification process, if that's what it's called, begins where you have the wood underground with no oxygen so it doesn't deteriorate. And the minerals slowly begin seeping into the wood and turn it to stone. Now I'm going to show you some of the samples of these rocks that are really pretty interesting. And normally the visitor center is open, but um, here when it's closed, uh, who knows what's going on, the whole you know, pandemic thing and whatever, but uh, it's usually a really interesting place to visit. Plus, the park rangers here at the Washington State Park are highly knowledgeable and can just load you with tons of info so you can learn all about this. Now, normally people are driving on that spectacular bridge over there, and they just drive by and you see this brown sign about uh, Ginkgo Biloba or Ginkgo State Park, and... You know, nobody really stops here, and I say nobody, but just generically. But the chance of you stopping here, it's well worth it. I mean, the last time that I stopped here was a nice warm day, of uh, actually pretty hot. And I just discovered, like, wow, this is an incredible find to think that there was at one time a massive forest in this area, and it was just loaded with plants. Now, interestingly, as well here, the uh, ancient Lake Missoula used to exist here in ancient Lake Missoula. From this location, high, high above the Columbia River, that lake was over 500 feet above my head, and it was loaded with ice and rock dams, and at one time that dam broke and just blasted this huge 60 mile per hour, 100 kilometer per hour wall of waters that tore down the Columbia River Gorge. Apparently this had happened multiple times at near these locations and just it was just unfathomably large lakes that formed after the ice age and blasted through here so i'll put some links below to the ginkgo state park so you can check out that hopefully i'll find a few links to the uh, lake missoula and i've got some information on the kiosks in this area to help you better understand the ginkgo state park and when you visit ginkgo state park make sure to stop by the rock shop where well, you can purchase samples of your own legally rather than uh, illegally collecting them. They've got all sorts of interesting samples, plus a huge rock yard of local petrified wood. Interestingly, the brochures here claim that the Ginkgo State Park area has the biggest variety of petrified wood in the United States, which is pretty unique. I saw hickory, fir, oak, ginkgo, um, yeah, maple. I was really blown away. There were far more samples here than I would see in any forest in the western U.S. So definitely worth checking out. Uh, prices seem pretty reasonable to me. Lots of little fun stuff for the kids and for you as well. So definitely check out the rock shop either coming or going. Folks seem real nice here. Well worth the stop. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a professional traveler and oddly enough a polar explorer as well. Check out links below to my book Antarctic Tears where you can learn about my expeditions to the South Pole and all sorts of other interesting things like topographic guides, uh, eclipse guides, uh, learning how to keep your feet warm in the cold because it is pretty chilly right now. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and enjoy your adventures and travels.